Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and we're going to take a look at the Nexus 9. This is the 16 gigabyte Wi-Fi model. It does come in 32 gigabytes, and it will eventually come in the LTE model, but right now we've got the Wi-Fi model. Most people receive these at their local stores today. I picked this up at Best Buy, but there's other places you can get it, Google Play, things like that. Uh, this one actually comes in at $399 or $479 for the 32 gigabyte model. This is pretty much the only one they had there, so this was my option, but you can get it in black, white, or a gold color, 16 or 32 gigabytes, 399 for the 16 gigabyte model, 479 for the 32 gigabyte model. It's not a horrible deal, but it's up there with the likes of the iPad as far as cost goes. So let's take a look at the box. You can see it's got a pretty nice, simple white box. Uh, it says it's printed with soy ink, and that's pretty much it, made by HTC. So let's go ahead and open this up see what we've got. This is the first device running, this is a terribly dull knife, uh, this is the first device running Android Lollipop. So that'll be nice to see too. I did mess around with the beta a little bit of on my Nexus 7. But here's the device itself. Let's pop this out here. Pretty nice. We'll set it aside and take a look at what else comes in the box here. Here we have a little thing that says Nexus. It's inside here. So nine. We've got some, these are for warranty or service numbers, serial numbers. We've got the Nexus nine. It's telling you where the power button is. Plugs, warranty safety guide, and all of your different languages. So put that away. Inside we have, looks like just two different things. Let's go ahead and open this up. And we have what looks to be a typical micro USB HTC cable to USB. And it looks to be a typical HTC wall adapter. So nothing really special here. This might be a little bit more powerful version. It's rated at 5 volts, 1.5 amps output. So. Uh, that should be pretty nice. Let's take a look at the tablet itself here. Let me set all this aside and we'll take a little bit closer look. So here's the Nexus 9. Now this is the first time I've actually seen this tablet. I know some people get to see it a little bit early, but this should be a pretty impressive tablet, at least as far as the Nexus tablets go. I do like HTC and uh, their, their hardware is pretty solid usually, and a lot of people have been saying this looks like a Nexus 5 just blown up, and it definitely does. It's got this slanted edge to it. You can see it's slanted, and this is a metal ring around the whole outside, and then we've got a plastic back. The plastic back feels very similar to the Nexus 7, and in fact, uh, looks a little bit lighter, so you can see there's the difference. It's picking up some dirt and dust. This is a Nexus 7 from last year. Versus the Nexus 9, size-wise, gives you an idea. So let's take a little bit closer look at what we've got here. So here we have an 8.9 inch display. It's not 10, in 10 inches similar to the iPad. Uh, it's an 8.9 inch display. So that's, that's a pretty good size. Not quite the size of an iPad, iPad Air. And I'll grab my iPad Air 1 here. This gives you an idea size-wise compared to that. It's a little bit smaller. Uh, Weight-wise, in the hands feels about the same. This is about a pound, uh, right around the same feeling as well. The display here is a 1536 by 2048 display with 288 pixels per inch. It's an also it's an IPS LCD display, so it should have good viewing angles as well. It's also Corning Gorilla Glass 3, so that should help with scratches. On the back, we have an 8 megapixel camera with LED flash. On the bottom, we've got our USB port. It also looks like we've got a little microphone right there. Nothing on this side. On the top we've got, uh, it looks to be, maybe it's an LED or something, and then we've got a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. On this side looks like another microphone, power button, volume button, a little mushy, that volume button. Uh, typical HTC buttons, quite honestly, and that's about it. So let's let's go ahead and turn it on. Then you can see our dual speakers in the front. We also have a forward-facing camera that's 1.6 uh, megapixels. 
Now inside of this is what, where it gets pretty impressive. It's got a dual core NVIDIA Tegra K1 processor clocked at 2.3 gigahertz. It's also a 64-bit processor and has a Kepler DX1 graphics processor with, I believe, 192 cores. So that's pretty crazy as far as that goes. It also has two gigabytes of system memory. The battery is a 6700 milliamp hour battery and hopefully will get us through a day, but we'll have to test that out later. So let's let it boot up. Uh, typical lollipop boot screen. I've seen this before in in uh, my tests with the Nexus 7 when I've used it with lollipop on there, the developer preview. It does have a good amount of glare on the screen. Uh, for those of you that were wondering how it compares maybe to an iPad Air 2 with the glare, let's turn this off so you can see the glare. You can see we've got the a reflection right here, but nothing over here. It's it's pretty good glare-wise uh, on on the iPad Air 2, and you can see that with the Nexus. The Nexus definitely has more reflectivity, but nothing more than an iPad Air 1. So if that's not really a reason not to not to get it. Seems like it's taking a while to boot up. There we go, and here we have the welcome screen. Obviously, we can pick our different languages. And wow, there's a lot of Wi-Fi networks around me that I haven't seen this on other devices, so that's pretty impressive. So I'll put in my Wi-Fi password. I'll hit connect here. So right away it needs to download and update and restart. So I guess we've got to go through that. I'll hit next. It'll take up to five minutes, it says. Uh, there's a little status bar right here. It's going pretty quickly, but I'll fast forward the video or speed it up for you so that you don't have to watch this. Just a couple of things to note while this continues to download. There's an obvious air gap between the LCD display and the glass, and honestly that's not too big of a deal in my opinion. In fact, Apple had that air gap until the latest iPad Air 2. However, I do see some light from the top and the bottom, and this is from the LED backlight. So it doesn't really bother me, but it's just something to note that it's there. Also, I wanted to compare the reflectivity of the Nexus 7 with this tablet, uh, just to give you a better idea. Some of you may not have an iPad around or uh, to give you an idea, but you can see reflect reflectivity wise, uh, not horrible. It's what you expect on average for a tablet. You can see there's the lights overhead uh, and really doesn't look too bad. So I think it'll be a great tablet for, for a lot of people, especially looking for a pure Android tablet. Android updated and now we're back. It rebooted, installed and everything. So here we have our add your Google account. So we'll enter our email address. I don't want to create account, I want to add my account. I've signed into my Google account and now it's asking me if I want to back up from any of these backups. And I'm going to say set up as a new device and hit done. And let's see if we can turn the brightness up. I guess we can't right now, so we'll hit next. Back up your tablet's data, use Google's location services, help improve location services, and help improve your Android to services. Hit next and wait for it to set up and get Google now. I already have Google now on many devices, so of course I want to use this. So we're waiting for it and it says welcome, wallpapers, widgets, and settings, touch and hold to customize background. So I've got it. Let's see if we can turn up the brightness here. And now the brightness is all the way up. So that should help, and you can see the display. Now, the display uh, actually looks pretty good. There's definitely that air gap, like I said. I don't think it's too big of a deal. And we can take two fingers and pull down and get to our settings. There's all these nice little animations. Got the volume all the way up. Uh, honestly, let me look at this a little bit closer. Honestly, it, it looks pretty good. Honestly, uh, The background's got some fuzzy detail in it and I don't know that I like this background wallpaper so let's take a look at what we, what else we've got so we can pick from this and you probably can't hear that but there's some nice little new noises that I've, I've recognized where they've got it going in the background I'll leave it stock just for the sake of the video but I'll probably change that eventually it's Google now here's camera. Looks very simple. It's basically the phone. 
tag your photos. I like all of these new menus. Uh, makes it feel much more smooth and refined. Anywhere you touch seems to work really nicely. Uh, we'll go to Chrome here. Let me turn it back vertically. And let's go to Zolotech. Everything feels fast and fluid, so hopefully it stays that way. We'll wait for it to load here. As you can see, it's nice and smooth. When I pull down, you've got that little part that dips down, and I can move my finger. You'll see it move. It's a really nice interface, and I'll be using it for the next few days, and we'll take maybe a little bit closer look. There's a bunch of other updates as well right now, so uh, that should be neat. You can see all of these different updates. We'll update all and wait for that to download. So you can see all of these nice new animations. Uh, Google's really refined the operating system with Lollipop, so it's really nice to see all of these changes. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Will you be buying a Nexus 9 or even a Nexus 6 or just be waiting for it on your current device? And what device are you using? Uh, let me know. If you're, if you're waiting for a another Nexus, let me know, or if you're getting an iPhone. Uh, if this isn't enough for you, I'd love to hear what you have to say in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.